welcome. On this lesson, we will give extra examples regarding graphing parametric equations. Now, if we look at the direction, it says graph the following parametric equations, and we're going to indicate the orientation of the graph. The first thing that you want to do is identify what are the parametric equations. Notice that here we have them. We have two sets of equations, x of t and y of t, where we call that x of t, it will give you the x portion of your location and yt will give you the y portion of your location. So we have two parametric equations, one for x and one for y. So we're good. And we also notice that we have parameter, a parameter here, which is t can only be used, or t can only take values between negative one and positive one. And recall that in order for us to start graphing parametric equations, we definitely want to use a table value. Here we're gonna have a column for t, which is a parameter. Here we're gonna have a column for the x portion, and here we're gonna have a column for the y portion. So let's just choose some values of t. Let's just choose some values of t that are between negative one and one. I am going to choose the values negative one, negative 0.6, negative 0.2, zero, 0 0.2, 0 0.6, and one. You don't exactly have to use the points that I'm choosing here, but I don't know, I just want it to be a little bit symmetrical and I don't want to choose, you got to choose more than three points. So I'm just going to choose different points that are between negative one and one and just try to choose those any points that are symmetrical or equidistant from each other. So now that we have properly decided what values of T we want to use, let's actually plug into the parameters and see what the outcome is. But notice that X of T is defined as just the expression of t. So if we get this value of t, which is negative one, and we plug into x of t, notice that we're gonna get just negative one out. Now, if we plug in negative one to y of t, we're gonna have one minus one square, which is just one. So when t is get plugged to this y value, my outcome is gonna be zero. And now notice that we have a coordinate point. Now we have a coordinate point at negative one comma zero, which is when X is negative one and when Y is zero. So we have a coordinate point at negative one zero. So we're gonna place that in here. And very important, we're going to indicate the parameter. So at this point, my T value is negative one. So let's choose another point. Let's try to complete this table. Now let's take a look at what's the outcome when T is negative six. Well, if t is negative six and I plug into the equation x of t, which is just defined by t, then x of t is going to be negative six as well. 0. 0.6, not negative six, negative 0. 0.6. And now if I plug in negative six, if I plug in negative 0. 0.6 to the y value, you can double check this, we're gonna get 0. 0.8. So now we have a coordinate point. We have a coordinate point at negative 0.6 comma 0.8. So let's identify that in here. So here you have negative point, 0.6 and 0.8, it's about one, two, three, about right here. So here we have our second point and very important, let's indicate the value of T that we use. So here, this is when T was negative, negative 0.6. Let's move on to the next one. What happens when t is negative 2? If t is negative 2, we plug into x of t. We're going to get negative 0.2 as well. If we get negative 0.2, we plug into y. We're going to get 0.97. So now we have a coordinate point at negative 0.2 comma 0.97. So let's plug that in here. So negative 2 comma 0.97 which I will say that it's somewhere about here. And very important, let's indicate the value of T that we use. For in this case, T was negative 0.2. And we're gonna use, we're gonna do this for every single point. So for zero, we plug it in, we get zero. We plug it into Y of T, we get one. So now we have a coordinate point at zero comma one, which is gonna be about here. Let's indicate what the value of t. Here, the value of t that we use was t equals zero. And we're gonna do the same for the other ones. So I'm just gonna plug in my results. 
So we're going to get 0 0.2 and we're going to get 0 0.97 and we're going to get negative 0 0.6, negative 0 0.8 and we're going to get neg positive 1, comma, 0. So we're going to get a 0 0.2, 0 0.97. Let's plug that point in here. Uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.97, somewhere about here. And this value was when t was equivalent to 0.2. Let's get our next point. Our next point is going to be uh, negative 0.6, comma, 0.8. Um, sorry, this is our positives, not negative. So positive 0 0.6, comma 8, 0 0.8, which is about here. So this is equivalent when t was 0 0.6. And lastly, we're going to get 1. We're going to get our last point at 1, comma 0, which is exactly right here. And this is equivalent when t had a value of 1. And notice that we have enough information now to draw our parametric function, because now if we connect our points, our points, they follow this curvature graph. So this is going to be the plane or the curve of this graph. Oh, I think I didn't went through that. So let's just make a better graph. So this is going to be the plane so this is going to be the plane of my curve. So this is the path that this parametric function is following or it is this plane. But more importantly, what is the orientation? Because forget that when don't forget that whenever we want to graph a parametric equation, we have to indicate what is my orientation. But notice that we start at negative one. Then as time increased, we were right here. As time increased a little bit more, we were right here. As time increased, notice that we were moving to the right. As time increased, so therefore, I have to indicate with some arrows that my orientation was going to the right-hand side. So now this, what I'm doing in blue, is what we call the orientation of the function. So now let's see if this is true. Let me, let's... So here we have a decimal activity. Now notice that this is exactly the same function. This is a, the first function that we had on our first example. Notice that we have the same parameters. And notice that now this blue point is just going to give me the location. And notice that as I keep increasing my value of A, all right, as I would have been increasing my value of T, notice that it's moving to the right-hand side. And notice that this definitely shows the findings that we just did on our previous example. Notice that here we have the same function. We have the same curvature. You can double check that we have the same locations. And very important also, we have the orientation. So definitely we got the right parametric function display in our work. Now let's, let's go back to this. Let's go back to the example. And let's actually do another, let's actually do another example. But notice that we're going to be graphing almost the same parametric equation, which notice that we're still using the same values. I'm sorry, not the same values, but the same expressions. Notice that we still have the expression square root of one minus t squared, and we have t. But notice that now the order, it's different. So how does our parametric function or equation, or actually graph, how is it going to look like if we switch the parameter? Because notice that in our first graph, the expression of t was assigned to x. So now notice that t is assigned to y. And the expression square root of 1 minus t squared was assigned to y. But now it's going to be assigned to x. We still have the same parameters. We still have the same restrictions on the parameter. So how is my function going to be different? Well, let's see. I mean, if we want to see how my parametric function is going to look like, I definitely have to do a table of values. So here we draw our table. So notice that it's still the same orientation for my table. And one column is for t, another column for x of t. 
in another column for y of t. And I'm just still going to use the same t values as I used previously, since I do have the same restrictions. So I'm going to be taking a look at the values when t is negative 1, when t is negative 0.6, when t is negative 0.2, 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.6, and positive 1. So perhaps we don't need this. Perhaps we don't need this actual one. So now let's see. I mean, when t is negative 1, notice that if I plug it into y, I'm going to get negative 1 as well. When t is equivalent to negative 1, if I plug into x of t, I am going to get the value of 0. So now we get a coordinate point at 0, comma, negative 1. So let's plot that in there. When x is 0, y is negative 1, which is that's my point right here. And very important, let's indicate that this is when t had a value of negative 1. So let's get our next point. When t is negative 6, we're going to get a point at negative 8, comma, negative 0.6. So let's plot that in here. When x is negative 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, my y is... Sorry, I just realized that this t is actually down here because silly mistake. Uh, 0, comma, negative 1 is definitely not up here, but down here. That's my mistake. So that's t equals negative 1. So definitely not here. All right, so now we're back. So now our next point is when x is 0.8, my y has a value of negative 0.6, which is about here, seems to be right. So now this point, again, this is when my t had a value of negative 0.6. Let's plot the next point. When t is negative 2, my x value is going to be 0.97 and my y value is going to be negative 0.2. So therefore, we have a coordinate point of 0 0.97, 0 0.2. So that's going to be about, next is negative 7, and 0.2 is about right here. So again, we got to indicate what is my location. So my location here is when t is negative 0.2. So when x is 0, we're going to get the y value at 1, comma 0 which is about here. Let's get our next point. When t is 0.2, when t is 0.2, so now we're going to get the value 0.97 and positive 2. So we got a coordinate point of 0.97 comma positive 0.2. That's a point. So when x is 97, 0.2 should be about here, and very important, this is when t was equivalent to 0.2. And let's just do this for the rest. So our next point is going to be 0 0.8, 0 0.6. So what would that be? When x is 0.8, y is about 0 0.6, which is about here. Very important, my value of t is 0.6. And the last point should be 0, 1. So when x is 0, y is 1, which is about here. And this is when t was equivalent to just 1. So after doing all this, we can define the plane, or we can define the path that this parametric function was trying to describe, or just in the connection of these points. This can be seen as the actual plane or the actual path. But now we got to indicate the direction of the plane. But notice that as we were increasing on time, we started at negative 1. As I increased my time, I went to this point. As I increased a little more of time, I went to this point. So as time was increasing, I was moving upwards. So therefore, my orientation should be given in this form. So now this is the correct graph of this parametric function. We have the actual plane drawn in red, and on blue, we're also indicating the direction. But let's see if this actually corresponds to what we have here in our graph. So here we have the same graph. Notice that 
we still have the same parametric function. X has been defined as the square root of one minus T squared. So here we have it. Y is T, same parameters. Let's press play because notice that we still have the same plane. It seems to be agreeing with what we do have here. But let's see if the orientation is fine. Oh, sorry. Let me actually do it going forwards. So there it is. Notice as we were increasing on time, my orientation is the same orientation that we were drawing on our previous example. So hopefully this gives you a better idea as to how to properly graph parametric equations.